Hey guys, welcome back. It's your brother in Christ Weston. Thanks for joining me today. So today's article will probably come out of a lot of places. We're going to start with the Christian Post. Let's get into it. All right, so we're going to talk about it. And I may have a different perspective on what has transpired for the past 24 hours with the Trump assassination attempt. And let's call it for what it is. It is an assassination attempt. No media outlet that is playing on a democratic side or that's not a trump fan is going to call it that they're just going to say violence or whatever and they're not going to use the language that needs to be used that is truth it's truth this was an assassination attempt why because there were innocent bystanders that died that means there was an intent to kill so let's read trump assassination attempt who is the 20 year old suspect bomb making materials found in suspect suspect's vehicle home by the way i didn't even i haven't read this article i just saw that and i grieved because this person is 20 years old so we're going to read this and i'm gonna give you my thoughts okay um in a critical security lapse 20 year old thomas matthew crooks from pennsylvania has been identified as a shooter and assassination attempt on former president donald trump at a rally in butler pennsylvania on saturday the attack resulted in injuries to trump the death of one audience member who's who i'm furious about and left two others critically wounded and I just read another article that says they believe two people have died now. Crooks, who resided 43 miles away from Butler Farm showgrounds where the rally was held, managed to exploit a security gap, a 20-year-old, and opened fire from an elevated position using a rifle. The attack during what was supposed to be a highly secure event has shocked the community. One Sunday morning, or on Sunday morning, the FBI confirmed the shooter's identity. The FBI has identified Thomas Matthew Crooks, 20 years old, of Bethel, Bethel Park, Pennsylvania as the subject involved in the assassination attempt of former uh, President Donald Trump on July 13th. This remains as an active and ongoing investigation and anyone with information that may assist with the investigation is encouraged to submit photos or videos to the FBI. Authorities also found explosive devices in Crook's vehicle that were parked near the rally on Saturday. The Wall Street Journal reported Sunday that the news was followed by the AP or Associated Press report that bomb making materials were also found at the suspect's home. Um, Crook's had no previous criminal history. According to Pennsylvania Public Court Records, the New York Times, his background reveals a mixed political profile. Although registered as a pub Republican, federal campaign finance record shows he made a $15 donation to Progressive Turnout Project through the Democratic donation platform Act Blue in January 2021. One audience member interviewed the BBC on Saturday and said he and several others repeatedly told the Secret Service, I watched that video and the police seen that there was a shooter station on top. It's a guy that you'll see right here. I'll take a picture on the roof of the building minutes before the suspect was happening. They were like, and right here, Elon, it's a, this is a, I saw the actual video and then Elon is, Elon Musk is commenting with his own post as he's reposting this. He said, the head of secret service and the leader of the security detail should resign, and they should. The fact that you would miss this um, uh, because if you're gonna guard a president and you're going to actually create a secure environment, then it has to be everything, right? For not even an assassination attempt, um, this guy who was an eyewitness is calling it out and telling people and then they're reacting slower because who is this guy? That's the issue I'm gonna talk about. Who is this guy? The idea of who is this guy versus who are they, the, the security detail and the man who died versus, or the two people, whoever, I don't even know their names. The one person that we know for sure has died versus Trump. The, the this, We're gonna talk about this dynamic. Um, Crooks graduated from Bethel Park in 2022. He's just graduated. High school accolades include $500 Star Award, National Math and Science Initiative. The assassination attempt is historic, comparable to only to the 1912 attempt on former U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt. Retired Secret Service agent Donald Mah Mahalik uh, told the journal, the immediate aftermath saw a rush of law enforcement to, uh, uh, to secure and investigate the suspect's family in Bethel Park, shutting down nearby roads and seeking insights from relatives and acquaintances who have not yet to comment. The circumstances of the shooting, including Crooks firing from an elevated position outside of the outdoor rally venue, the recovery of an AR-15 type rifle near his body to reflect the planning involved in this act. The rifle was legally purchased by his father and the journal reported adding the authorities were interviewing the suspect's family. This has nothing to do with the rifle or the fact that the young man got his hands on it. This is the fact that there's something else more nefarious and more poisoning and more sickening that's happening. Law enforcement was still piecing together how Crooks accessed the rally site and managed to carry out the shooter, the shooting despite the, the expected tight security. Former Donald Trump was quickly to be secured by Secret Service agents. I saw it, pierced his right ear, saw that. I saw him actually touch it, cause visible bleeding. He was hospitalized, released from the hospital late Saturday night. Subsequently traveled to his golf club in Bedminster, New Jersey. He was seen exiting his plane at 12.37 a.m. Trump authorized a GoFundMe page for the victims, 
Praise God for that. Organized by Meredith O'Rook, the National Finance Director of the 2024 campaign, President Donald Trump has authorized this account as a place for donations of supporters of the families who were wounded and killed in today's brutal and horrific assassinations. All donations will be directed to these proud Americans as they grieve and recover. May God bless and unite our nation, says the page. Hours after the assassination attempt on his political opponent's life, President Joe Biden addressed the nation in a two-minute statement, condemned the violence. He didn't call it an assassination attempt, but stopped short of calling it an assassination attempt. There's no place in America for this kind of violence. Everyone must condemn it. You condemn violence by the acts or the intentions of what the violence is, and that is violence of killing and murdering or assassination attempts or anything of the sort. Here's the issue. This is a 20-year-old man, okay? Uh, let, me, let me just see if I can find anything else that's, that's, that mentions anything. Secret Service failing, the multiple outlets are not calling it for what it is. It was an assassination attempt by all stretch of the means. There's no other way. Uh, the Harbinger's Daily said, this is a spiritual battle. President Trump's fight for America is gonna cost him his life. The idea here is that Trump is the, the poster boy, um, which I just don't feel good about at all. Um, Trump rally shooting, Biden says, there's no place in America for this kind of violence. Attendee who was killed is, is identified, that's good uh, to know that he's identified. Um, uh, you have, uh, you know, uh, a Trump shooter claims he saw a man with a rifle. That's the same video that we, that you just saw a picture of. Okay. Like, I think I saw something here, too, that said, uh, oh, two hours ago by NBC4 Washington, schoolmate says suspected shooter was bullied almost every day. How is a 20-year-old carrying out such acts? How is that happening? It would make me think what's going on in the household. What's going on parentally? What's going on politically has invaded your home. I had a conversation with a friend of mine and he sent me some things and I was just like, I, somebody posted like, God bless him, God bless Trump and you know, God save Trump. And I kept thinking to myself, I'm sure he did. But is that the thought that we should be happening? That we should be thinking of? Because on the other flip side of that, what I was talking about earlier, a child, it's 20 years old, a young man is committing crimes of an assassination. What has happened? What has happened that would be politically in his brain, in his life, that would cause him to want to make an assassination attempt on a president, on a former president who's running for president again? And he died. And so did somebody else who wasn't intended to die. And they did. That person, by the way, when I was watching videos on it yesterday, said that they, they got shot in the head and there was brain matter, literally brains on the ground. It was all over people or on something, but there was what was supposed to stay on the inside is not on the inside, it's on the ground. Everybody's post, everybody's post was about God saving Trump. And I grieved. I was in my car yesterday. I was eating a burger because we had just come home from church. And I would go get a burger. My wife and my son had already eaten. So I was like, I'm going to grab a burger. And I'm watching videos. And there was a part of me that saw Trump got up and he put out that fist. And I like hoorahed in that moment because I was like, he's fighting for America. And as I watched everybody else who's there in the live shooter action scene, they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my thought was, why are we hoorahing when there's a dead person two feet away from you. Why am I hoorahing? Politics have come such a way that if you're not Republican, you're not a Christian, or you're not a conservative, you're not a Christian. And if you're a Democrat, you're the wicked, you're the, you're, your father's the devil. I had a thought yesterday as the Holy Spirit just brought it into my mind it was, uh, it was um, Joshua, what is it? Uh, uh, Joshua, the walls of Jericho, right? And there's a, uh, the commander of the army of the Lord says this. Joshua says right here, we'll read it from the New King James. Joshua says, um, oh, where is it? Uh, verse 13, and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, a man stood opposite of him with a sword drawn in his hand against Joshua. God's an Israelite. I'm a person made in the image of God, by the way. No angels made in the image of God, but you are. 
and he still had a sword drawn. And he said, and Joshua went to him and said, are you for us or for our adversaries, or our enemies? And so he said, no, but as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have come. I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face and worshiped him and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the army of the Lord, uh, the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, take off your sandal for your place where you're standing is holy. Before he could even answer, you are standing on holy ground. When one translation says, when it just says, it says, no, he says, neither. He says, and so the angel said, the commander of the army of the Lord, a commander says, neither. He says, are you for us or for our adversaries? He says, no. I think we've gotten to a place in our political ideological walk about whoever we're going to put as king over America, that it has gotten in the way of if God's going to provide for America, if America's going to be destroyed, if God's going to protect America or anything like this. So instead, we have to be derogatory towards a Democrat Christian or Democrat in general. And if you're a Republican, then praise God. You know, it's like you're, you're, you're in, you're certified and no, you're not. I want my response to be neither. I'm for the Lord. He's a commander of the army of the Lord. Holy. And then he and then Joshua says, What would you want me to do? He doesn't even answer him with it. Like, like, first of all, he says, You're standing on holy ground. Take your sandal off. With a sword drawn. Like, I will murder you. I will kill you. You're made in the image of God. He's holy and never committed any kind of sin whatsoever. And he says, I'm not for you because you right now, us right now, seem like we're for putting our political a, a political king in a position to rule and to make our lives better. It'll make everything better. We sound just like the Israelites. When the Israelites didn't want God as a king, you know who God gave them? He gave them Saul. What happened to Saul? He was good. Started out great. And then it went. It went bad, bad. Like, bad, bad. That's when David had to come. And then when David showed up, it went great. And then it went bad, bad. And then there was repentance. And then there was another. And then there was a, there was Jericho. I mean, there was there was Bathsheba. Then there was the census. And then he kind of finishes out. And I just think to myself, what is happening? What are we doing? Have we gotten to a place where we devalue? Like, look at it. A 20-year-old young man lost his life, tried to take out another life, missed it, took out somebody else. And we are glorifying that God praised, that God saved Trump. Is that our response? As believers, is that what we're glorifying? I think we're so deserving of God's wrath in this moment because we have totally disregarded the bystander who I have no name for. There's an article, I haven't read it, but there's no name for it and somebody else. And people are, wow. And people, you see people screaming and they're like, and rightfully so. I did it in my car. And in my car, I started to choke up and cry because I saw myself kind of dipping the toe into, well, if Jesus isn't going to show up soon enough, then this is the closest thing to Jesus. And you may not be thinking that consciously, maybe subconsciously, it's in there working it out, thinking, well, since I can't be patient enough, on the Lord to come and thinking that the Lord won't work out what he's going to work out and put authorities and whoever he wishes to put into power, by the way, we don't vote who goes into in, in to power. The Lord does. That's 1000% true. And I'll show you. Um, let me find it here. Um, Romans 13, 1 through 14. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there's no authority except from God. Repeat that again. There's no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. 
Therefore, whoever resists authority resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to con to for rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but, but but to bad. And they should be, right? Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you'll receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is a servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, this is all in context of somebody who's obeying God. God raises up, though. He will raise up wicked rulers to judge a nation. This is it's total, it's 1000% scriptural. And I'm sitting here thinking in my mind, do you not think God put Biden in, into, into power? If he didn't, none of this would have happened. Well, you can't say, yes, I can, because this is what's happened. There's only one timeline of how this works. I've only believed in like one timeline. God knows everything is going to happen with everybody's life and everybody's choices. And though there could be theoretically multiple timelines, you're only going to literally have one. And that one is the one that's going to happen. That's going to be your life and what plays out and what, tra what transpires. God raises up wicked rulers to judge nations. And then he calls out and he says, when the people are done placing their faith, placing their idols, placing their, their give me a king on somebody who's not fit to be a king, and then he comes to save. And he raises wicked rulers, and he'll take them up and bring them down. He raises up good rulers. Then he passes it off and hope he'll like, he'd like to pass it off to somebody else. And he knows what's going to happen. God is not like a like a time traveler. He just knows because he knows this is this is what's a part of what's going to happen. Just like Bible prophecy, it is set in stone. I think the idea of all the posts that have come out talking about Trump this, Trump that. Am I going to vote for Trump? 1,000%. I was, Trump is the guy right now to run America, for sure. I ha and, But there's a difference between us in the sense that I am not placing this like half-hearted, like, like weirdness of, of idolizing Trump in the sense that he's going to make everything right. Well, nobody thinks that he's just going to make America better. Do I think he's going to make America? What if he doesn't? Remember we talked about this? What if God is raising up Trump just just to show the, the wickedness in our hearts about wanting a ruler who seems godly, who comes in and does good godly things, right? The Bible says that you know how to give good gifts, but your heavenly father, who is holy and perfect, knows how to give better. If you know how to give good gifts, we do. How much more does the Lord? And I just think to myself, man, I'm like, what does that look like? What does that look like for us? What is, what is happening with all that? And uh, and all that to say, there is something persuasive, pervasive in our society right now with politics that's so divided that if you are Republican, there's no Republicans or Democrats in heaven. There's only the saved and that's it. You're saved by the blood of Christ. And that's the only person you can glorify him. You should vote godly. You should vote for godly principles. And yet, the idea that you want to my son is knocking on the window. The idea that you want to um, glorify God's man. And I'm just thinking to myself, what if Trump pulls the wool over your eyes? Because your eyes are so focused on putting him in power that you're missing out on who the Lord is calling you to actually worship. You are worshiping an idol. I'm not worshiping. Bro, yes, you are. And you can't see it because you're too deep. You're in too deep. I had a friend of mine make a post. Um, and in that post, he said, I wish the shooter didn't miss. I saw comments from the other side that said, um, uh, they don't make them like Lee Harvey Oswald anymore. I, I'm, I'm sad because I think we have just gotten in too deep. And I think that's by the great, by God's, by the Holy Spirit, bro, bringing something over my heart being like, what about that guy? The no name. But what about him? Somebody just lost a father, a husband, a brother, a son. And all we're worried about is Trump. That's it. And that's not Trump's fault. People turn, we turn our hearts into wicked ways towards people we want to, to rule over us. We want to rule it. But in the meantime, are we rushing to have a ruler who end up being a Saul? I don't know. 
What I do know is I'm not going to participate in glorifying Trump and saying God saved Trump. I think God did save Trump. I think he did. But I think our response, and excuse me, and I think our response, what about that man? I think we don't need to have headlines. God saved Trump at Trump rally, this, that, that. And then we say, oh, an innocent bystanders and pray. I think it's a man lost his life today. A family lost the head of their household. We need to pray for that person. And thank God I read, I heard an article that he was a believer in Christ. Oh yeah, and Trump survived. That article doesn't doesn't get clicks. It doesn't get views. It doesn't it doesn't do the thing that it needs to do for us to make it like feel good and make it feel like it's 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 going to catch eyes. It doesn't. And in that moment, it makes me think of Jesus because Jesus was not somebody to be looked at. He didn't look good. And when I've talked about this, if you see Satan and you saw earthly Jesus, you would look at Satan and go, "That's got to be Jesus. It's got to be." How deceiving our hearts are. How deceiving. I think we've missed it. I think we I think we really missed it. And I think it's bad. And I think if you if you find yourself convicted by any means of what I'm saying, I think you're in too deep. I think politics is running your Christianity, and Christianity is not running your politics. And I think your politics are 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 identifying people, what they look like and who they are and who they really are, because you can't be this and you can't be this. And mind you, there will be murderers, adulterers, people of the most wickedness of kinds, Satanists, previous, people who have committed homosexual acts, people who are still same-sex attracted, but they've placed their life, they've placed their faith on Christ and they will be in heaven. That's a full guarantee. Why? Because it's the blood that washes. It's the blood that saves. Not your acts, not your past, not your future. It's your faith. When you place your faith on Christ, he guarantees you you are saved and sealed. I will put a mark on you and you're saved and sealed until the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit is a down payment. People who go to hell, there will be awesome, good, moral, Republican people who said they believed in God, Democrat, conservative, really good, moral, high, excellent people, yet they never place their faith on Christ. And I think we're just sitting in this weird situation right now where believers are dipping their toe in the water and seeing Trump and, sla and, and all these things and slapping a God sticker on it and saying, yep, got to go this way. And I think you're missing it because what I see is a, a man who just lost his life. And Trump, yes, he was saved and he's good. That man is who our focus should be on. They're trying to take out the president because they don't want to, they want to destroy the country. The, the whole, the whole thing's going to get burnt up anyways, bro. It's not because I'm having a fatalistic kind of situation. I'm, I'm saying my idea is that there's no man in office who's ever going to make it better until Jesus comes. Not one. And we can call increments. These things can be subjective, but objectively what you're actually looking for is Jesus to come back and be on the throne. And we are not going to have some kind of pseudo Jesus hop in the spot. No, you know who that is? Antichrist. Second Thessalonians 2 says it. God will send. And not because this is it, but it could be one day. Who knows? I've said it before. The man of lawlessness. Let's read it from the New King James. It says it here. Um, uh, I'll read verse 5. Uh, do you not remember that when I was still with you that I told you all these things? And you know what is restraining that it may be revealed in its own time. For the mystery of the lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out the way. Then the lawless one will come. He will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. With all power, power signs and lying winners, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send in a strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they may all be condemned because they did not believe in the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. It's about Satan. It's about demonic, demonic powers. It's about... Uh, uh, unbelievers. The thing here is that God will send a strong delusion on them. And I, I don't think for a second that when God sends, that God can send anything and you would just be like, oh yeah, like if God is sending something and showing his hand about what's happening and he's sending judgment, it can come through anybody. Okay. And I would, I would hold back, hold back your, your reserves about really just like investing your your faith and your your spiritual security and your your wealth and your financial security in a person who thinks they're going to do good and could 
totally well be, totally well be a deception. And this is the issue we have as, as human beings, the need for a king, the need for a power to rule, to be secure. When we have the ultimate security, it's in Christ and it's in God and that the Lord needs to work. Jesus is building his church. The church is not doing it. I don't, I don't know, man. I think we missed it. I just think we missed it. And uh, and that's could be subjective. It's all subjective. It's my opinion. You don't have to agree. We can be on here, love each other, and still disagree, and that's okay. I'm going to be voting for Trump. He's the man to run the USA for sure, unless another be a better man shows up. I don't see one right now, but there could be. What if he was on the Democrat side? Mm, I'd vote Democrat then. Why? Because I want to line my, my faith with some somebody and someone who's walking lockstep with what the Lord is doing and who the Lord is putting in power and what the scripture says verbatim. See, it doesn't matter what side you're on. It's a matter if you're choosing biblically or you're just choosing because you hate the other side or there's a piece and you need to, you need to examine your heart and examine yourself about your, your position and what's really happening here because politics runs deep and why, why? And it just feels like the devil's religion in some weird way, his tactic. To, to separate even the good and to separate the, the 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 reconciliation of what could happen between two differing sides, not just, and I just think there's something there and I don't wanna be a part of it. So anyways, guys, that's the video. Let me know what y'all think. If you like the video, like the video, be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more. I'll see you in the next one.